Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Voth, joined by Drew Galloway. We are here with probably the most anticipated uh, recruiting show in some time because this is going to revolve around the transfer portal, and it's not basketball-related, although we do have stuff of that nature coming your way throughout the week. But this is going back to football, and it's going to center just on one position running back because there's obviously one big name out there that everybody is interested in hearing about where K-State might stand. And then also uh, they have a visitor that is going to be in town this week that is a running back as well and a very productive one at that. So all of these things to kind of say and set the stage for, we're going to talk about Dylan Edwards, who on three reported on Tuesday was going to be entering the transfer portal. And uh, for the uninitiated, that is a player from Derby that committed to K-State and then committed to Notre Dame before actually signing with Colorado. He played decent football at times last year for the Buffaloes. He most notably had four touchdowns in their opening weekend game against TCU. Uh, but then he only scored one more time the rest of the way, and that was in the final game of the year against Utah. So... This is a guy going into the portal because Colorado continues to just try and accumulate more and more running backs for some reason. I guess that's probably Dion thinking that, hey, it's the running back that's the problem and not our trash offensive line, although they are trying to make that better. Uh, that place is just in shambles. So I saw somebody throw out there like, mm, is this a red flag that Dylan Edwards is now in the portal and leaving Colorado after the way that his recruiting process went? I would say any other program in the country, I would maybe raise a red flag about, you know, leaving and all this stuff. It's Colorado. I think Dylan Edwards should be applauded for jumping off of the sinking ship. I mean, at the end of the day, I think people, they, they think of, oh, well, you know, the band kept playing on the Titanic. You know what they did? They died. People that jumped off the ship, some of them survived. And Dylan Edwards is setting himself up to be a survivor to get off the she the, the sinking Colorado Titanic. Uh, let's let's just start with with Dylan Edwards here. Where do you think K State's interest level is, and then where would the chances be that K State is able to come through for Dylan Edwards? Now, I mean, I I say this with a, a little caveat because I mean we we already know that they have a running back coming in. Uh, for a visit this week. But I, I think that there is going to be a legitimate interest from K-State uh, on or with Dylan Edwards. I mean, we, we saw it within the first, like, five minutes of Dylan Edwards being in the portal that Avery Johnson wasn't exactly subtle about no. wanting to play with Dylan Edwards again to the point where, of all fans, Oregon fans were like, oh, this is tampering. It's like... It, well, why do Oregon fans care? <laughs> uh, but, I mean, it, it just makes a lot of sense with K-State wanting a second running back. They already had him recruited and committed at one point. He's a local kid. He does, and it's like the perfect complimentary piece as well to DJ Giddens. It, because, I mean, we saw they tried to go with a little thunder lightning with Treshawn Ward, but... I mean, we all know that Dylan Edwards is more explosive even than Treshawn Ward was. So, I mean, it, it makes perfect sense from a fit standpoint. And, and I, I know that it, he's a polarizing figure. I mean, I compared it to discussing a political candidate on, on the board yesterday because of how extreme some of the takes were. That's fair. But from a strict talent standpoint, I, I think that he is probably everything that you would want from the second running back because there's going to be a lot of touches there, uh, especially because I, I think that they they don't want DJ Giddens to get worn down throughout the season by giving him 25, 30 carries a game. So there's plenty of opportunities there, like probably 15 touches a game uh, for the second running back. So I think that that's plenty. And I think that he would fill the role nicely. And uh, the thing that, too, with Colorado, like I, I saw that they've lost like 27 guys since last season to the transfer portal. Like they're just a mess. And the other thing, if you want to bring up his lack of production at Colorado in the run game, did, did, did you realize Colorado didn't run for 1,000 yards as a team 
last season. I would not have guessed that. That's uh, that's, I guess, not that shocking when you consider bad offensive line and uh, Deion Sun is the quarterback. So DJ that, Giddens, it adds up. DJ Giddens ran for more yards last season than all of Colorado. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's an impressive stat right there, and that would be one that. Look, I think this is where because most of the Dylan Edwards stuff, I don't think it's a question of like, do people want the talent of Dylan Edwards at K State? I think the resounding answer would be yes. I think where the reservations would come from some people that have a tough time looking past how this whole thing played out, and this is not to make excuses for Dylan Edwards, but I think one could, if you you know, if you take your K State hat off for a second and you just kind of go through this where. Okay, he commits to K-State, very public, was exciting, all this stuff, and it led to like a week or a week and a half later, Avery Johnson also committed. But then he decommits, he goes to Notre Dame. Absolutely sucks if you're a K-State fan, but at the end of the day, you kind of understand it. Like, hey, it's it's Notre Dame. Some people have this affinity for it. What they can sell you, you it's easy to be wooed by that. I could see that. And then, obviously, a total just wrench in the plans of Notre Dame because Colorado, at this stage, looks like the biggest idiots in the world because they decided to hire Deion Sanders as their head coach. And as we know, many, many, many high school recruits and transfer portal guys were swallowed up in the Deion hype and were like, I want to play for Prime. I want that to be my head coach. They want the fun of it. What we're seeing, like what you just said, where they've got nearly 30 guys from last year's team that have already left, they're realizing, oh, this is not a good spot for me. Like, this is not the the right place for me to be. I'm not going to become a better football player here. And at least this upcoming season, Dion is going to continue to care more about the success of his kid and poo-poo everybody else on the roster. So I think that While it's a a tricky situation, and I think you're right on saying, hey, this is like talking about a political candidate, I do think the Dylan Edwards situation is there are a little bit of things that you have to look into a little bit deeper and have some nuance for, and that sets it up that a K-State reunion would make sense. And at the end of the day, as we've seen Avery Johnson already be very vocal, uh, what Avery Johnson wants, Avery Johnson should get, like – Agreed. They, you you gotta you gotta cater to that guy, and also trust his judgment in some way. Like all of these teams in every single level of sports, like your best player, you give him some equity and you give him some trust. And if if he wants Dylan Edwards and Dylan Edwards wants to come to K State, K State would be dumb to not take him take him in with open arms and uh, and give things a go. Yeah, I mean it, it is a delicate situation because you need to cater to Avery Johnson and you probably don't want to go through the same. I don't even want to say trouble, but it, it was just a mess of uh, Dylan Edwards, first recruitment to the point where like he, he even visited K state again when yeah. he was went to Notre Dame. Uh, so, I mean, I, I think that this is worth the risk. And if the culture is where we know it to be at K state, they can probably afford to take Dylan Edwards because I'm not even saying that Dylan Edwards is a bad kid, but there's there's just so much potential like for backlash at first about taking him. That would kind of give you a little bit of a pause, but I think that K State's culture is fine, and I also know that the first. 50 or 60 yard run or, or pass that Dylan yeah. Edwards rips off that every single K-State fan will forget about his recruitment prior and just be celebrating him scoring a touchdown uh, because he is that kind of explosive player. And this is a no doubt, like if he has interest in K-State and coming back, right, like you have to take him because he is so supremely talented well, I also think a couple of things here. Number one, a lot of K-State fans, I think, had the mindset when he went to Colorado, like, okay, we'll see in a couple of years anyways. Like, Dylan Edwards going into the transfer portal was the most predictable thing ever, whether it was going to be this season or sometime down the road. I don't think anybody thought he was going to finish as, as, a, as a Buffalo. So you have that built in. I think a majority of the response that I've seen – 
has been people that have been like on board with the yeah, like it wasn't great how the the high school recruiting process played out, but like it's a Kansas kid. We'd welcome him back. He'd be talented. He'd work well with Avery Johnson and DJ Giddens. Like it would be awesome. And I think you know you bring up the this was kind of to go into the circus act that was the high school recruitment, but it does show kind of where K State might fall on this. The fact that they allowed Dylan Edwards to visit when he was committed to Notre Dame shows that even though there was no doubt probably some just hands hands covering their face and like rubbing their head like what are we doing with this kid like this is crazy it shows that the the k-state staff never took it too personally and was never so soured that they were going to deny dylan edwards from visiting when he was committed to notre dame and so i think that the relationship that the coaches probably still have and the mindset they have for this situation is probably a little bit more glass half full than even some of the fans do out there i think that's a key highlight in this is that this staff, I, I think they understood that there would be a chance down the road that maybe he would come back home to them. Oh, I, I 100% agree with that. And I, I also think that there's kind of a perception that he's not a very hard worker or like a good kid. He was ready to play at Colorado day one yeah. because of his preparation that he did over the spring when he enrolled early at Colorado. There's a high possibility that if he comes to K state and he'll have Avery Johnson to be able to get him up to speed that he would be ready by week one to play. Like, yeah, (laughs) like there's no doubt in my mind because he is that driven to succeed that he would be ready by week one. And I mean, I I said this in our group chat yesterday, he comes to K state that game in Boulder. That's going to be a movie. Yeah. Well, I, I, I think, I don't think anybody should question like, the the work ethic of Dylan Edwards. I think calling him lazy would be like just the most drastic generalization of what you you're trying to to pair together a couple of different things like how the recruiting process played out. You're like, yeah. well, he likes the limelight, so he doesn't work as hard for. It. That's totally false. Like Dylan Edwards certainly to me comes across, and I like I've seen him multiple years in high school covering him, and then going into you know everything else like. This is definitely a situation where I, I he he works hard for it. And I think it's the I want I'm gonna play hard, but I also wanna, you know, have a lot of fun while I do it. And I, I think we've seen that. Now you're if you're K State, you're hoping that he comes through for you. Now, on three reported earlier today, Wednesday, that some of the other players here to watch would probably be KU, Louisville, and Nebraska. And the last time around, outside of Notre Dame coming in, Nebraska was a significant name that was floated out there but uh it's a different coaching staff now that's in that's in charge there um so it'll be interesting to see but all those are obviously going to be in play but at the end of the day if you think if all four of these schools go all the way in 100 percent working to get dylan edwards who's the winner in that recruitment i sort of have a hard time thinking that he doesn't end up at K-State at this point. I I just think that it's the perfect storm of kind of everything coming together at once here. K-State needs a second running back. Avery Johnson's the starting quarterback. You have K-State, you have Avery Johnson, like, straight up without saying it, saying that he wants Avery Johnson to come to K-State or, or that he wants Dylan Edwards to come to K-State. So I, I just think that it's a perfect storm. And I just think that K-State makes more sense than a lot of those other schools. Like, I, I know that Nebraska was in on him hard in high school, but I, like, I, I just don't really see the appeal there. KU is the same role as K-State, where he'd be behind Devin Neal, but then he doesn't have one of his uh, teammates and friends from childhood as the quarterback. And I would say on on that real quick too, like it's not just Devin Neal that is there, but Lance Leipold likes to use his running backs. Yes. uh, Almost to the point of like, I'm not questioning Lance Leipold. He's been successful, so obviously he knows better than me. But he does seem to have an affinity for whatever reason – for Daniel Highshaw as well. And so like, that's another guy that's going to get touches. And, and I think also 
the versatility that K State's offense would have for Dylan Edwards is significant because yeah. we know that they'll find ways to get him involved in the run game and the passing game, but like they could line him up out wide theoretically a couple of times or put him in the slot. And we already know that K State is starting to feel better and better about what's going on there. Like this would be a really elite move for this offense. It just adds another weapon. And, and this kind of goes into like if you give yourself, well, I, I, like any game that you play, it's like if you get one chance to throw the ball into the hole, then okay. But the guy's going to come along and buy five chances. He's got a better chance of doing it than you. Yeah. I mean, for K State, that's what the offense would be. You add another ball and you have a chance to put it in the hole better. The ability to put him in the slot and have DJ Giddens at running back with Avery Johnson as a quarterback poses a lot of problems for defenses, I I would think. So, I mean, it, it's somebody, that's why, like, no matter what, I, I think that if he has interest in K-State, you have to seriously consider it because he is a home run threat every single time he touches the ball. All right. Well, that is, that's what's going on with the Dylan Edwards situation. Obviously, there's going to be uh, plenty of time for this thing to play out over the next couple of days. One that there's less time to kind of wait and play out is Devon Booth, uh, running back from Utah State. He led the Aggies in rushing in 2023, over 800 yards, uh, almost as much as Colorado had as a team last season, scored six times on the ground as well. Uh, this was a, a visitor that you uncovered, uncovered yesterday, Drew. Uh, what can you tell us about Devon Booth? Uh, so, like you said, he led Utah State in rushing a year ago. Was actually a JUCO All American before uh, going to Utah State. Has some really nice production. I mean, at 800 yards is nothing to sneeze about in the Mountain West. And had some pretty good games against quality competition. He ran for 103 yards on James Madison, who was top five in rushing defense a year ago. Had 100 yards against Boise. I, I think that he would be a He'd also be a great RB2 in, a, in the perfect situation again because he kind of brings that extra element, averaging over six yards a carry because he was a uh, fourth at Utah State in yards per carry in a season last year. So th this is one of the best running backs on the transfer portal along with Dylan Edwards, I think, that is available right now. And his visit begins Thursday. And, and I think that you'll kind of see – where K-State is at with Dylan Edwards, depending on what happens with Devon Booth. Because it, it's, I, I just don't see a scenario where you can get both. So it's probably one or the other. And I'm really interested to see how this plays out because it's not like Booth has, or it isn't like, or he doesn't have like a ton of options either. Because I, I know that he has a lot of options right now and school's coming after him. So I'm interested to see how it all plays out because I know that the polarizing figure of Dylan Edwards being out there, what, what is, what is your call here on who you would rather have? <laughs> I mean, I, I, I know who I would rather have, but I think it's good for people to, to understand that you think this is a one or the other situation. So honestly, like if K-State slow plays booth, then we'll see, you know, that probably means that the Dylan Edwards thing is is going to get serious. And if not, and they they take him, then it means that they're either not interested or they just don't think that it would all come together. Or it's not worth risking losing out a guy like Devon Booth, who if he wants to come to K-State, this is a an awesome second option behind DJ Giddens, considering where the running back situation sits after spring. Yeah, because I think that K-State was in a saw where they needed a – more proven running back too. I really like the running back room and what the future of the running back room holds, but you probably are holding your breath. If DJ Giddens goes down to the point where you just, you don't, you have like three or four total carries in college from the guys that are remaining. So I think that having a guy that, you know, that can come in and be solid and he has some explosion, too. I mean, six yards a carry is nuts, no matter what your competition level is. So I, I'm excited for the possibility of Devon Booth or Dylan Edwards because I think the K-State's probably in a good spot for both.
at, at this current moment. Yeah. All right. So we'll give you the final word here. Uh, if you had to guess how it plays out, who is the transfer portal running back that K-State ends up getting, you know, in, in however many days it takes to get one committed. And we can play this like NCAA NIT or nothing. You either give me Dylan Edwards, Devon Booth, or no one. Or somebody not on the roster, I guess, or the list of guys that we're looking at here. Oh, man, this is, this is tough. You're putting me on the spot already. <laughs> if I had to guess, and this this is just purely a guess, I would probably lean more towards Dylan Edwards because I think that, like I said before, it just seems like the perfect storm to get him back in Manhattan. Yeah. But I also don't want people to think that, like, Devon Booth isn't a possibility because that's a legit thing. And having him come to visit already is a huge thing for K-State too. Yeah. We'll see how it goes. I mean, the, the big news is obviously going to end up being that like, it, it's helpful to have Avery Johnson. I think that that skyrockets yeah. your chances. And we've already seen the campaigning start from him, his mom yesterday. I think, I think a lot of people will be on board by the time that it comes around. We'll see if it comes to fruition for the Cats and who they might have to fight off for both of these transfer running backs that uh, would certainly help the roster heading into 2024. So for Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth. For more K-State recruiting news, head over to kstateonline.com. We'll have more throughout the week, football, basketball, whatever it is. Be sure to check out KSO over at On3 or right here on the YouTube page and podcast platforms as well. So we're out of here. Thanks for watching the KSO Show.